गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास टूडे क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट ऑक्सीडाइजिंग रिएजेंट्स दे आर मेनली पार ऑक्साइड्स डी एम पी ओसमियम टेट्रा ऑक्साइड पोटेशियम पर मैगनेट पी सी सी पी डी सी एंड सम अदर पार ऑक्साइड्स दैट वी हैव टू स्टडी सो दीज ऑक्सीडाइजिंग रिएजेंट्स आई बी डिस्कसिंग इन टू टू पार्ट्स इन द फर्स्ट क्लास यू विल हैव डिस्कशन टिल पोटेशियम पर मैगनेट एंड रिमेनिंग विल बी इन द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ सेकेंड क्लास सो द वेरी फर्स्ट इज एम सी पी बी ए इट्स अ पार ऑक्साइड एंड इट्स स्ट्रक्चर इज दिस सो इफ इफ वी हैव टू सिंप्लीफाई हाउ दिस नेम इज ऑप्टेन्ड लेट्स let's draw this is benzene if we attach a carboxylic group this becomes benzoic acid and on meta position if we add chlorine this become meta chloro benzoic acid but in our uh, compound there is one additional oxygen when there is one additional oxygen it's uh in benzoic acid the carboxylic group is like this but in par acid there is a peroxo group this is called peroxo group so this kind of uh, group is present in the peroxylic uh, sorry peroxides so this is our meta chloro par benzoic acid this bond is not very strong uh it 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 cleaves very easily to provide a nascent oxygen so due to its uh, lesser stability it is highly reactive and this makes it a very strong oxidizing agent the advantage with this peroxide is it it is easy to handle as it is present in the form of powder and it can be easily stored in the refrigerator but if you commercially buy this uh, oxidizing agent high purity will not be there less than 75% of purity will be present in the uh, sample uh, available commercially and that is because the more purity compound is not stable it's explosive you uh, you cannot transport that like in aeroplanes it is banned so because of the ease of transportation only less than 75% purity um compound is available and in most of the cases more than around 10% water is present as a impurity and some other substances to make it less stable now if we look at the reactions it can um, it can convert alkenes into epoxy epoxides uh in case of uh, MCPBA that is meta chloro par benzoic acid the epoxy bond formation takes place and stereochemistry is always retained let's say you have a trans alkene so the product obtained will be trans and you will obtain meta chloro benzoic acid it just uh, provides a nascent ox oxygen which uh, simply forms a epoxide bond here cis alkene will provide you cis product and again meta chloro benzoic acid try to do this uh, this one yourself second it is used in bare willigar reaction um bare willigar reaction can be done using any peroxide so um 
your mcpba is also used in this reaction this is a name reaction which converts um, ketone into ester or if you have a cyclic ketone that gets converted into lactone so um and there is a migration of one alkyl group like in ketone you have two alkyl group so the more substituted alkyl will shift or um, or the group which will form more stable carbocation that will be shifted so you can say if your al alky alkyl group is tertiary then secondary then primary then high h positive so this will be the order of the shift if you want to look at the detailed mechanism uh, this is also available on the youtube channel you can go to that particular name reaction there the mechanism is given now um this is again a ketone but here the react in the reaction they have not taken the substituted perbenzoic acid it's simply perbenzoic acid and in dichloromethane so it will uh, function in the similar way it will form a uh, form a ester now you have to identify which of the group will shift and what ester formation will take take place again another peroxide hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide in presence of a levy space gives similar kind of um reaction this is carried in ether so do it yourself it's a bare willigar reaction so obviously you will shift the alkyl group which will form more stable carbocation based on that you can easily identify what um, product will be formed here now third thing is <coughs> mcpba can oxidize sulfides to sulfones and not only mcpba other peroxides can also do this conversion sulfur into sulfones if we talk about amines then nitroxides are formed it's a general reaction again mcpba and other peroxide can carry out this reaction if we talk about the limitation limitation of mcpba mcpba is a very uh, used molecule and there is a principle of green chemistry that is called atom economy so based on that principle the the use of mcpba is avoided because the atom economy in this in the case of mcpba is very less as compared to other peroxides uh, that is hydrogen peroxide or any other simpler peroxide uh, for example paracetic acid or potassium peroxy monosulfate or oxane it is also called oxane so uh, if we compare the atom economy of uh, mcpba to the other simpler peroxide its atom economy is less but in some cases it has a very high selectivity it has more selectivity for some of the reactions as compared to other peroxides so there its use is 
um, good but other than that those reaction if other peroxides can also perform the same reaction then they are preferred the second uh, oxidizing agent is desmartin per iodine so this is the structure of desmartin per iodine this is the simplified structure and this is the complete structure of dmp now uh, the role of dmp is to convert primary alcohol to aldehyde and secondary alcohol to ketones it's not very easy to convert primary alcohol to aldehydes and stop there uh, with many oxidizing agent the reaction goes up to carboxylic acid so um, this particular oxidizing agent stops at aldehyde and ketone now if we compare dmp with other chromium based or dm dmso based oxidant it has many advantages like it the reaction can occur at milder condition room temperature neutral ph time period is short yield is high reaction is simple high chemoselectivity and most important tolerance of sensitive functional groups and a long shelf life from long shelf life what we mean is we can store them for a very long time now um, alcohols can be oxidized to aldehyde and ketones without af affecting furan ring sulfides vinyl ethers and secondary amides this makes it a very unique oxidizing agent now how do we prepare it so it's basically prepared from another oxidizing agent that is ibx 2 iodo oxy benzoic acid now um ortho iodo benzoic acid potassium bromate and sulfuric acid a mixture of all of these three is prepared and then heated on heating ibx is obtained this ibx on acid acylation gives us our dmp this acylation is carried out by using acetic anhydride and acetic acid so this way we obtain our dmp now uh, if we look at the reaction so this is a uh, alcohol it could be primary or secondary from these r group we can identify second group should will be alkyl group always and this could be a hydrogen or alkyl that means it could be a aldehyde sorry uh, it could be a primary alcohol or a secondary alcohol when treated with dmp it gives us for primary alcohol it gives aldehyde and for secondary alcohol it gives us ketone next oxidizing agent that we have to study is osmium tetroxide uh, it's basically osmium metal connected to four uh, oxygen atom by double bonds so um osmium tetroxide is a toxic reagent highly toxic uh, but it is used in synthesizing vinyl diol from alkenes it is soluble in organic solvents but very sparingly soluble in water uh, if we look at the preparation it's simply a reaction of osmium powder with oxygen and the temperature is normal temperature or a room temperature but when you synthesize it commercially or on a very large scale the bulk needs to be heated to around 400 degrees celsius uh if we look at the reactions so the reaction is oxidation 
of alkene to synthesize uh, one to diol or you can say vicinal diols this is a very mild reaction you you do not need to provide very uh, critical conditions it will undergo under mild condition and lead to the formation of syndiol that means uh, both the hydroxy groups are connected from the same side either from if you look at this diagram either from above the plane or below the plane and this reaction doesn't occur with alkynes so uh, this is our alkene a 3 plus 2 addition reaction takes place with osmium tetroxide and this kind of adduct is formed if you look here carefully what is happening this double bond is shifting here to form a new covalent bond this double bond is breaking or you can say this pi bond is getting broken to form uh, a covalent bond here between this carbon and this oxygen again this bond is breaking to change the oxidation state of osmium when osmium is present in osmium tetraoxides is its oxidation state is, is 8 when this forms this cyclic adduct its oxidation ch uh, state changes to 6 and this kind of cyclic structure is obtained here we were taking trans alkene so uh, this one R group is above the plane another one is below the plane alright on treating with water the osmium adducts breaks and it form it get two hydroxy groups attached to it and two hydroxy groups are connected to our product so this vicinal diol is obtained and we can see it has syn addition of both the hydroxy group now this process can be further extended like we obtained 1 to diol but if we further oxidize it we can convert it into two aldehyde groups just like ozonolysis when we perform ozonolysis of any alkene we obtain two um, aldehyde groups or depending upon the substituents two ketones also can be obtained so similar to that there is a Lemix Johnson oxidation reaction in which per iodate is added to achieve the cleavage of this one to diol and this also regenerates our osmium tetraoxides so look at the process uh, this is our osmium tetraoxide this gets consumed in the formation of our one to diol and after obtaining 1 to diol when we add uh, sodium par iodate it regenerates our um, oxidizing agent and here it leaves the bond this particular bond gets cleaved and you obtain two different aldehyde groups in the ozonolysis similar kind of products were obtained mechanism were, was entirely different but this this type of two aldehydes were obtained now moving on to our last oxidizing agent that is potassium permanganate or KMnO4 uh, this is a very common compound found in each and every chemistry lab it's a strong oxidizing agent and when mixed in water it gives a deep colored pink or purple colored solution 
now if we talk about its reaction uh, on combining with alkenes it can form vicinyl diols but when it is used in dilute condition this is the reaction alkenes under mild uh, condition that is cold written here so uh, dilute so dilute alkaline solution of kmno4 is added to alkenes at under mild condition one two diol is obtained so this this reaction i have given for you to predict the product if we look at the mechanism if we look at the mechanism how the glycol or 1 2 uh, diol or vicinal diol is prepared we have taken a alkene reacted with kmno4 this kind of adduct as we have seen previously in osmium tetroxide this kind of adduct is being formed here when treated with water the magnesium removes as mno2 and we get 1 2 diol again here also syn addition taking place like the previous one as in case of osmium tetroxide here also we are getting glycol by syn addition but if we provide heat if we provide some heat or we increase the concentration of KMnO4 this this bone gets cleaved and instead of alcoholic functional group we get a carboxylic group here so basically what is happening in concentrated KMnO4 it further oxidized oxidized the uh, carbon it leaves this bone in order to convert it into carboxylic acid so you will have to look at the conditions provided what conditions are there what product will be formed now this is an example where our alkene is not symmetric so the cleavage will happen but only this side will be able to form carboxylic acid on that side only uh, ld uh, only ketone will form so in this product you can see one side a ketone group is there other side a carboxylic group is, uh, is there similarly try to predict the product of this one Now, if we, if we talk about alkynes, um, like in case of alkene, we are getting bis-hydroxy functional group. But in case of alkyne, no such reaction will take place. Instead, dions are formed. So, when you have triple bonds present here, you will get carbonyl carbons so two carbonyl carbons are obtained and there is a base present here okay and this if this reaction is carried out under harsh condition like if you heat it up or you take the concentrated uh, KMnO4 this bond again cleaves and you get two carboxylic acids If we carry out the reaction of aldehyde with KMnO4, aldehyde gets converted into carboxylic acid. For alcohols, it first gets converted into aldehyde, then get oxidized to carboxylic acid. But in case of alcohols, a copious salt is present there. So primary alcohol gets converted into carboxylic acid. 
secondary alcohol gets converted into your um, ketone group only if we have aromatic side chains like alkyl benzene or you can say this one aryl group is connected to aryl uh, sorry one aryl group is connected to a alkyl chain and we provide kmno4 then the side chain if this side chain if this r group has ch on the first carbon that is attached to the aromatic ring if this carbon has a hydrogen it will be converted into carboxylic functional group benzoic acid will be obtained if there is no hydrogen attached to the benzylic carbon benzylic carbon is the uh, first like if you, let's say you have a chain here so the very first carbon attached to the ben, benzene ring is called benzylic this position is benzylic so if this carbon has any hydrogen present on it only then you will get benzoic acid and if you look at these three questions this will get converted into benzoic acid this have two alkyl chains attached so it will have two carboxylic groups but if you look at the this one this one doesn't have any um, benzylic hydrogen so no reaction so that way you will have you will decide what uh, reaction is taking place i have given some questions for you to do yourself try to do these if you have any doubt ask in the class if we summarize kmno4 so basically it oxidize the carbon atoms which have sufficiently weak bonds now which of those carbons can be oxidized have a look carbon atom with pi bonds if there is a carbon atom which is having double bond or triple bond it will oxidize it carbon with weak ch bond such as just now we have seen these type of compounds carbon containing co bonds so alcohols and aldehydes carbon with exceptionally weak co bonds um not co it should be cc exceptionally weak cc bond as in case of glycol so um agar hamare paas aisa kuch present hai to this bond will cleave like we have seen in case of uh, alkynes when we provide harsh condition and the diol gets converted into two carboxylic groups so that way those bonds can be cleaved by kmno4 or cc bond next to the aromatic ring or an oxygen so all of these can be oxidized by kmno4 and one more compound is there that is phenol phenol gets oxidized to para benzoquinone other than phenol no aromatic carbon like these carbons present on aromatic ring which are part of the aromatic ring will never be oxidized by the kmno4 